Hey, good morning. Welcome, welcome to the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. This is the last day of January. It already, I don't know, I don't know, it already feels like a half a year. Um, so much has happened. Um, thank you for joining us. We have a wonderful Sunday celebration service today. Um, right now we're going to invite you to sing this great this great song by Suze Ogden and Daniel Neymond. It's a kid's song, but, you know, we can pretend. It's a good message for all of us. Be as good as you are. Ready? One, two, one, two. Maybe you're a painter, a lion saber. Maybe you're a doctor or a nurse. Maybe you fight fires or walk high wires or build, build castles like hers. Do you pilot a plane, engineer a long train? Are you the captain of a great big boat? Do you write hit songs for the world to sing along? Are you a farmer raising pigs and goats? Whatever you decide to do, it's special because it's you. Go ahead and be. There are gonna be times when you're trying to shine And somebody says, who you? Keep a smile in your heart, just remember who you are Let your light keep shining through You, go ahead and be as good as you are Go ahead and shine, bright as a star Good morning. Good morning and welcome. We're so happy that you've joined us to the Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Robert Ekman, and we are a spiritual community where all are welcome to be part of our virtual love streaming community. Now today we're very excited that beginning with this morning's service, we are opening the center up for in-person attendance again for up to 30 people. Uh, here are our new protocols. Uh, arriving, please arrive by 1010 and line up six feet apart outside and we'll begin admitting a maximum of 30 congregants on a first come, first serve basis. All attendees will be required to wear a mask covering for the duration of the service anytime they're in the building. Current guidelines giving the new COVID variants suggest two to three layer mask or wearing two masks. To ensure social distancing, there will be no congregating in the building. Chairs will be arranged to provide social distancing between household groups. Attendants will be, attendants will be asked to enter and exit with six-foot spacing, and food and beverage services are not being provided. There will be no youth church, but children are definitely welcome to sit along with your household. All right, well, with all that in mind, we're so happy to have some of our congregation back here in the audience. It's just a treat to, to have you back. Yes. 
Our practitioner holding high watch today from home is Katie Hernandez. Throughout the service, Katie will be in prayer, knowing that the best and highest good is unfolding as we share this sacred time together. And our prayer practitioner this morning is Farrell Zeman. Now, our, spirit, our center is a spiritual community that teaches a philosophy for daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among religions. We honor all pathways by which people seek to know and connect with the divine, and we work on our individual consciousness so that we can help make the world a better place. From wherever you are, I invite you to recommit yourself to our center's spiritual purpose by saying our purpose statement with me. We are an open, welcoming community, celebrating our divinity, loving our humanity, and nurturing our journeys of spiritual discovery. Thank you. Yeehaw. <clears throat> For all of the latest information on what's happening with the center, or if you're new and want to know more about us, you can visit our website at www.spirituallyfree.org. On our homepage, you can submit a prayer request, see what's coming up next Sunday. While elsewhere on the site, you can watch previous services, read about the folks who you see up here on the stage, and others who work behind the scenes. We're thrilled to welcome back to the pulpit this morning, our guest speaker, Randy Scott. Yes. And Randy will be speaking to us about looking above. Next week, Reverend Linda Brewer will be back with us to speak to us then. For all the details of any of today's announcements and lots more, please visit the announcements section on our website, which has the latest information from the center, from our home office, and the greater Salt Lake community. Here are our announcements. Every Sunday at 1230, please, after the service, please join us on a Zoom chat with anyone that shows up from the congregation to chat, share what's going on, and interact with each other from the safety of home. This February 15th through the 18th is our annual Centers for Spiritual Living virtual convention. This will be the second virtual convention called VISTA 2021. This will be attended by individuals and member communities from around the world. <laughs> Ministers, practitioners, members, and musicians will be present to enjoy the inspiration and information that our hosts and facilitators will offer. This year, the theme of the convention is One Mind, Infinite Connection, and you can find more registration information on our website. Now, our center was founded on and is grounded in prayer. This helps us deal with whatever's coming our way and create a positive experience regardless of our situation. Our professional prayer practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer and are so ready to pray for and with you. Just click on the link on our home page and send us a request and all of the practitioners will be in prayer for you all week. Or if you'd like to connect personally, let the practitioners know through the website and a practitioner will give you a call so that you can be actively a part of their prayer for you. All right, everyone. Now, I invite, I invite you to please settle in, allow Farrell's reading and the centering music to take you to a sacred space within, and then Farrell will lead us in prayer. The reading for today is from The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. The title of it is Love Dissolves All Fear. Once again, love dissolves all fear. Greater than fear is love. Love dissolves all fear, casts out all doubt, and sets the captive free. Love, like the river of life, throw, flows through me and refreshes me with its eternal blessings. Love cannot be afraid. It is fearless and strong and mighty in its works. It can accomplish all things through the inner light of that faith in the all good, which fills my very being with per powerful presence. Love casts out all fear.
As I breathe in this moment, I breathe in that ever-present life given to us by the Divine Creator, that we are blessed and protected and loved. And that is our true beingness in this lifetime. And so as I recognize that love and that peace within me, I embrace a protection, a circle of protection around this physical body, protecting me from assaults, from disease and anger and violence. And so I ground myself in that love with the divine creator, knowing that I'm protected. And I claim this into being for myself and for everyone listening to this. I claim this peace and this protection around us. And knowing that to be so, I claim it now and release it into the law of creation as I declare it to be, and so it is. Thank you, Farrell. I invite you to sing with us once more. Um, this is a great song by a practitioner from our teaching. Um, he, I just looked him up on Facebook this last week, and he's really, um, really transformed his life. Um, it was really inspiring to read some threads and quotes um, and learn a little bit more about this gentleman. Um, this is such a great song. It's, um, it, it points at all the, the principles um, that that we teach, and we're not alone in teaching these things. Um, they're universal truths, but it's uh, put together in such a wonderful way, and it's such a great time of year to revisit the fundamentals, the the foundations of of our philosophy. Sing along with us. It's called "There Is One Life." One, two, one, two.
it is my pleasure to introduce our special music for today, Mr. Rick Charette. Rick, um, I love to brag about his cool history. He was um, brought up in a musical family. His parents were both members of the quintet Page Five that sang on the Patty Page show. And um, his mother was a lounge singer for many, many years. And his father was the president of the Michigan Arts Council. And uh, he grew up in Michigan or in Detroit and uh, hung out with all these uh, cool cats and big wigs in the music industry having, um, you know, cocktail parties at the parents' house and, and stuff. And then um, as a teenager, they started a family band, kind of a Partridge Singers kind of band, and they were um, pretty locally famous. They did a record and everything. And, uh, and then he um, started a quintet, a vocal jazz quintet here in Salt Lake. And <laughs> I'm just talking on and on, so he, he gets more and more embarrassed. Um, and uh, he um, has almost a degree in music theory and composition, and he uses those skills not only to build choral arrangements for his vocal jazz group, but he, if you pay attention to our flute parts, he um, writes, the, he composes those and writes them out on a score and everything, and <laughs> he just does a wonderful job arranging. There's all sorts of fancy stuff behind the scenes that goes into making wow. us sound as good as we do. <laughs> so Thank welcome, you. Rick Charette. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm impressed with myself now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a song I wrote, um, I, I think it's been almost 10 years ago. Um, I have, throughout my life, had um, these, these voices in my head. And I don't think I'm that crazy. The more I talk to people, the more they have voices in their head, too. So, um, and these voices sometimes aren't very nice. So this song speaks to overcoming or quieting those those negative voices and allowing the positive ones to come through it's called i give the gift i am i have often walked bad dog in my head I give him bones to pick, but he picks on me instead. I toss him dreams to fetch so I can get ahead. The mud just hides them in a hole or rips them up to shreds. But there's an angel singing at the bottom of my soul. She tames that mangy mud when I let her take control. Opens the blind my mind let some light in I feel the call and God is smiling and I give the gift I am my heart my soul my hands I see by the bully in my brains I let him put me down call me ugly names he knows the things I want to have to do to claim he says who do you think you are and pours him down the drain but there's an angel singing at the bottom of my soul take control opens the blinds in my mind to let the sun in and standing tall I hear the call the good is coming and I give the gift I am my heart my soul
So I forgive my foolish use of this good mind. I leave the bully and the bad dog far behind. Unleash the love, the joy, the light, let it shine. Embrace this heaven on earth and see my stars align. My own voice ringing and I let it take control Open the blinds in my mind to let some light in And standing tall I heed the call God is smiling As I give the gift I am My heart, my soul I am the gift I am. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Shemaine, for introducing Rick. Um, in my introduction, I didn't know a lot of that, and I've known Rick for a long time. That's amazing. That is a song that we've uh, sung as our congregational song over time as well. It's one of my favorites, and Rick, as our, as our music director, is really a, a rock of our congregation. Thank you. Thank you. It's my honor to introduce our speaker to you today. Uh, we have a, a small core of speakers that are speaking to us while we are on our search for a minister. And we, and I feel like we have some wonderful, um, very deep uh, people who share their messages with us every week. And so it's my great honor to introduce Randy Scott. Randall H. Scott is an author, a speaker, mentor, and founder of Zen Powerment. His passion for the fusion of science and spirituality complements the teachings of science of mind. He's found his way to enjoy more peace, power, and purpose in life, and discovering his own unique authenticity. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Randy Scott. Sure is nice peopling, right? It's been a while since we've peopled. <laughs> um, music is so dear to my heart. And um, after the, those last two songs, it's like, we could, we could just go home now, <laughs> right? I mean, that was, those are strong messages. Those are really strong messages. Um, what if when you died, you met God, and God said, how was heaven? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it's, something, it's something that I've thought about quite a bit, just because I think so many times in our lives, we give ourselves like this delayed gratification. It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work hard, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to get this big reward. And what if we just chose to create heaven here and now um, and just really understood what our true nature is? Um, in, the, in the Science of Mind stuff, it talks about um, our awareness. Heaven is our awareness of our true nature. And the thing that I've noticed, especially with, with my empowerment business, it's like we put all these layers on top of us, right? And we, we're like this big Eskimo with tons and tons and tons of layers on. And what's interesting, um, Farrell was talking about love versus fear. And love is what we were born with. 
It's absolutely what we're born with. And fear is what we learn. And what's interesting is all of our fear comes from up here. And it's a poor use of imagination, right? In, in the song that you did, Rick, you've, you've got this mind and it's going back and forth. And it's like, you know, and we, we're tough on ourselves. So, much, so many times we are tougher on ourselves than we should be. Um, the topic today is looking above. And as I read through it, it kind of, kind of perplexed me. Um, because if you, if you think about that song, we talk about God is in us. Right? God is in us. So we are individuations of the divine. Now, one of the things that I started doing probably about 12 years ago, I, I, did, I, ch I chose to create a partnership with the divine. And what I mean by that is the what and the why are up to me, and the how and the when are up to the divine. And by doing that, my life has just gotten so much richer. And it's, it's just, it's taking that step of absolute trust that things are going to work out in divine timing. Um, when I started my empowerment business five years ago, um, I thought I'd just be coaching executives. I was a marketing exec for years and years. And so when I first started, that was, those were my people, they were my friends. And so I started coaching and my, my vision is to be powerful love in action, impacting millions of people with empowerment. That is my what and my why. And then when I published my book, um, this guy comes and he says, I am passionate about teens. And so the divine kind of throws a, throws a nugget and says, okay, we're going to work around teen suicide. And so I, I, we both got involved with a group called In Circle that supports the LGBTQ community. And their suicide rates are three times higher than their straight peers. And so I started doing that. And then um, I mentioned this before when I spoke. I, I spent 10 months in a sober living house doing research on addiction and people, these men that had just gotten out of prison. And so both of those experiences support my what and my why, but it's nothing like I would have thought. I didn't think that I would be involved in those types of things. And it has been such a blessing. Um, to be able to, to see the love that these guys have and the struggles that they've, that they've had with addiction. You know, if, if I'd gone through what they've gone through in their lives, I would probably be self-medicating with heroin as well. It, it gave me so much compassion for them. Um, so when, when I was uh, sitting out here uh, waiting, Delan brought up something that I hadn't thought about, um, but I'm going to use it. And um, I'm creating a book and a, a uh, it's a mentor, uh, apprentice mentor relationship. And it's called Taming the PF Beast. And what I believe is that we have all these layers, we're covering our, our divinity and our true nature. And yet, if we realize that these things are not us, but they're tools, and they make terrible masters and great servants. And so um, the PF Beast is an acronym, and the, the P stands for our programming and our past, and the F is our fear and our future, right? All, all, so our programming is all based on the past. And about 80% of it happens by the time that we're seven or eight years old. And a lot of the programming's great, right? A lot of the programming helps us. We don't have to, coming up the stairs, I don't have to think left foot, right foot. It's just automatic. But then there's these dis disempowering programs. And they all stem from fear. 
And so um, fear of loss or abandonment, fear of failure or not being good enough, fear of what other people think, um, fear of the unknown, and then fear for our safety. And so just like the song, we make up all these worst case scenarios and very rarely do they ever come true. But these programs will show up and you know, I've been in meetings where a CEO was acting like a five-year-old because he was running a five-year-old program. And he got triggered and that's what happens. Um, so the past and the programming, fear and future, the B stands for our bodies and our brains, right? So many times we collapse all these things and we think that it's who we are, but we're this divine individuation. We're fractals of divinity. So our bodies and our brain, and then our emotions and our ego is what the E stands for. Our attachments is what the A stands for. Um, and our stories and our thoughts. So this phone, it's not good or bad. It just is. And how I use it will, will tell if it's good or bad. So it's the same thing with, these, with thoughts and our stories. There's a, there's a quote by um, Ajishanti, and he says, experience yourself outside of any story about yourself, any memory about yourself, and any old defining characteristics. And so one of the things that I've been toying with kind of for some articles is the concept of getting to isness. Right, who, who we is, getting to our isness. And think about, think about, for example, if I have been gone and hadn't seen someone for a year, that person could have completely changed their life in a year, and yet the programs and everything else that I'm putting on that person are a year old. And it doesn't give that person the the respect that they deserve. And so as we look at ourselves with all of our labels and judgments and, and whatever that, you know, what, whatever that is, can we get to a raw isness? Right? Who are we? If we think about, if we think about looking above, the, the thing that came to, sight, uh, came to mind for me was my higher self. Right? Rick's talking about, Rick's talking about the, the, the dog. And for me, it's like this battle between my higher self and lower self. And what's really cool as well is if our love is coming from our heart and fear is coming from our brain, all we get to do is just turn this down a little bit. Just turn the volume down and turn it up in our hearts. Um, I, so I, I actually wrote a song, um, and it's called Unbecoming, because what, I, what I've seen is we become pure, purer, cleaner, the more we unbecome. The Buddhists have a concept called Shoshin, which is the beginner's mind. And have you ever wanted to try to experience something for the first time again, right? To be able to, so I've got a, a friend of mine and he adopted this Samoan girl. And this girl's kind of chunky, she's about eight years old. And to watch her eat a hamburger with the passion that she has is just amazing. It's beautiful. I, I mean, I would much rather watch her eat that hamburger than for me to eat it again because she just has this passion. And if we could take that into our daily lives, I think that would be huge. Um,
so one of the things that I talked about when it was back in July, I think, because the topic was the Tao of Freedom, and that was a really cool topic. Um, and I reviewed an acronym, and it's called a plan, right? P L A N. And for me, the way that we experience our awareness and our divinity and our trust is P is being present. Just be ultra present. Because then, if a program comes up, you don't have to run it. You don't have to run it. Right? I was with my eight-year-old daughter a couple, a couple weeks ago. And we went to, back in her room. Her room's a mess. And she has this umbrella open. And it's broken. And I go, why don't you close that? And she's like, my mom said that I could have it open in the house. And I felt a little trigger. I'm the dad. I'm in control, right? <laughs> but I recognized that that trigger was there. And it's like, oh, that's a cute little human. <laughs> right? Does it really matter if the umbrella is open in the house? You know, whatever your, if you have a superstition or whatever, cool. I have what I call the five by five rule. If it's not going to matter in five years, don't spend more than five minutes on it. And, but it was so cool that I could let my daughter do what she wanted. I could recognize my trigger. And it was, it was there, but I didn't run it because we don't have to run it. We don't have to run them. But that space of awareness, that space of presence is what allows that, right? When a trigger comes up, we can attach to it, which will amplify it. We can act on it, or we can just let it go. And that's the space of our power. So the L stands for love. And agape love, to me, is the highest. It's pure acceptance and understanding. And as we come from this place of agape love, we become new creatures. In the, in the quote that, that Farrell talked about, love versus fear, they don't exist at the same time. And most of us have learned conditional love. It's what we were raised in for the most part, right? You do this, you get this. You don't do this, and it's, it's, it's conditional. And as we learn to accept all of ourselves, we can also love others deeper as well, because we can't give away what we don't have. Um, the A in the plan stands for acceptance. Um, for me, I, don't, I, I almost don't like using the word love, because people have different experiences of love. And um, matter of fact, when I was, I was doing energy, we were doing a, a group energy um, exercise, and we couldn't get a consistent calibration on love because it was people's experience was different. If I came from an abusive home and you came from a loving home, our experience is completely different. So what, what we ended up doing was switch to gratitude because gratitude is a little more homogenous. It's a little more, and it's a very high vibration. Um, and then with the plan, so presence, love, acceptance, and non-attachment and non-resistance. And when I, so I published my book almost three years ago, and in those three years, um, I've learned so much about non-attachment and non-resistance. And if I were to rewrite, or if I write m my next book, non-attachment, non-resistance will be one of the top three principles. And it has, it has changed my life completely. Um, so I gave, I gave an example of love of a river. And 
love would be the river itself. And then on one side, you'd have attachment. On the other side, you'd have resistance. And they show up in our lives. Um, for example, di uh, disempowering programming, I was adopted. And I was adopted at three days old. And I was resentful of my birth mother and my adopted mother at three days old. And I, I, didn't, I didn't learn this until way, you know, years, years later. So I get the gift of abandonment. That gets to show up for me. Um, and I've, I've, worked on, I've worked on the trigger and everything, so I, I don't deal with it like I did in the past. But if I attach to that programming, if I attach to um, abandonment, then it shows up as uh, jealousy, it shows up as codependency. And then if I'm on the resistance side, if it's like, no, nope, I'm not going to do that, it shows up as self-sabotage. It's like, I'm going to abandon you before you abandon me. And so when we can take this middle, the middle way, right? When we can take the middle way um, and just unbecome and unbecome, then we really understand our divinity. So, as I prepare to close, I want to read another quote from Adyashanti. And it's about, it's about enlightenment or waking up. But it says, when you wake up from your story, guess what you realize about everybody else? They are not their story. They are spirit, too. And that spirit is totally independent of their story and your story about them. So you not only lose the center, so you not only lose your center, you lose their center, that box that you would put them in. You see, they are the same. And this is why it says enlightenment is never a personal matter. You can't realize you are enlightened and still believe that others aren't. You can't see your true nature without seeing the true nature of everything. It's liter literally impossible. This is a tremendous act of compassion and an act of love. So my challenge to me and to all of us is that we learn to trust in the divine. This is such a fun time to be able to really practice trust, right? We got all kinds of plot twists going on right now. What a great opportunity to practice love and to practice trust. So I'm going to close with a prayer. Dear Creator, We're grateful for this life. We're grateful for the opportunities that we have to trust. We're grateful for our light and our shadow. Help us to recognize our divinity to be powerful, and to always know that love is the correct response. And together we say, and so it is. I am so blessed, I am so grateful.
Now is the time of our conscious giving, which in our center is one of our spiritual practices, something we do for our own spiritual health and well-being. We recognize the blessings that have come to us as part of the divine flow of good, and in gratitude, we keep that flow going by sharing what we have with our spiritual center so that it might continue to bless us and remind us of the truth of who we are. We understand that some of you are experiencing changes in your financial situation. Just know that for those of you who can continue to contribute, it will mean more now than ever. If you are here with us, an usher will be coming around with a basket should you want to give that way, or you can use the in information on the screen to text your gift. In the spirit of gratitude for your good, please bring your gift to your mind and your heart as we speak together our giving blessing. Divine love, love as me, me blesses, blesses and multiplies all that, that I am. am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Filled with gratitude, I let this be, and so it is. So I, I'm not sure um, if this is actually a, a good choice for a song after such, such a marvelous talk. <laughs> so I'm, <clears throat> I guess what I'd like to say about this, this is meant to be a tongue-in-cheek kind of message. I think it's, it's absolutely ludicrous, the things that we tell ourselves we should and shouldn't do, think, be. And I, it just ha keeps happening. <laughs> um, at least for me, um, I, I should do this. I should go there. I should, I should not do that. Um, and it's exhausting. And to be able to, as, as, as Randy so eloquently said, um, to accept, um, to love, and and not attach yourself to those ideals that we think, you know, we should be or have, um, but to listen to that divine voice within us, the passion that that's innate, that uh, that wants to come out, and these other things are just get in the way. So. Um, what I'd like you to do with this song is to just listen and see how, how ridiculous it is to think that you are unworthy.
I'm unworthy. No matter what I'm doing, I should certainly be doing something else. And it's selfish to be thinking I'm unworthy. All this me, 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 self, 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 self. If I'm talking on the phone, I should be working on the lawn, which looks disgraceful from the things I haven't done. If I'm working on the lawn, I should be concentrating on all those books inside since I have not read one. I should learn how to meditate and sew and bake and dance and paint and sail and make a spot show. I should turn my attention to those 40-year-old socks there in my drawer. I should let someone teach me to win windows and learn French that I can read and write and speak. I should get life in prison for how I treated my parents from first grade to last week. And I should spend more time playing with my dog, much less money on the needless things I buy. I should send correspondence back to anyone who's written phone or text since junior high. I should sit with a therapist until I understand the way I felt back in my mom. I should quit Washing TV, eating, drinking Facebook, thinking, sleeping, writing Stupid songs And I should be Less impatient when the line Just takes forever Cause those two cashiers are talking I should see What it's like to get up Really early, rain or shine And spend three hours walking know CPR and deep massage and braille and sign language and how to change my oil. I should go where the situation's desperate and build and paint and trudge and tote and toil. And I should chant in impossible positions so my legs appear to not have any bones. I should rant at the cops and politicians and the corporations in indignant tones. I should save lots of money to give Audubon and all the rocks and animals and plants. And I should brave possibilities for plotting plans for problems. Blah 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 blah. I'm on. Not. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today. Thank you, those who showed up um, to visit with us. It's so good to see some smiling faces and uh, get a few um, safe virtual hugs. Um, I see the smiles in your eyes, at least, and it's it's wonderful. Thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, we feel the love. I uh, hope you have a blessed week. Thank you, Randy, for such a great talk. And um, thanks for singing along with us. I hope you have a blessed week. Uh, February starts tomorrow. Woo! So we'll have some new music next week, um, some, some great new guests, and some messages to send your way. So please tune in. Um, remember, there's a live chat, Zoom chat. Um, there's a link right where you're looking on Facebook, there's another link to um, just click on and, and join that little social gathering. It's good to connect always. Let's sing our closing song together, I Am As God Created Me.